There are two main ways of measuring particulate air pollution in the atmosphere. There's the old and there's the new. And we've been developing some new techniques uh, at the Crack Lab. Uh, first, I'm going to show you a, a sort of a, a pop demo about the old techniques, although those, although crude, are used as a basis of our legislation. What I'm going to use in place of pollution particles are, in the first place, some Tic Tacs. And you can see that our size selector allows them to go through. That's different from the Smarties that I'm using. They just don't go through. So we have no record of those as pollutants. What we do, though, is have some idea of these orange and green ones, although we can't discriminate between them. And what we do is we just go away, take this beaker, and weigh them. Now, a real sample is one I've got here. It's a filter paper. We use this for some burning coal that we had in a stove. And this is the blackness that comes off. But the, the legislation is simply measuring the weight of the pollutants that there are. No idea of what it is. Now, if you think that's crude, you ain't seen nothing yet. Um, here is a, a biological method for measuring things like uh, pollen and spores. So what we do here is simply have a bit of sticky tape. I've got some sticky tape here. And in the atmosphere, you get maybe some pollen coming in, being sucked onto the sticky tape. Maybe some spores coming on as well. Um, what we do then is simply take away that sticky tape to an optical microscope and we try and count and identify what's there. Now you can tell that all of these methods that I've shown here take some time. It's become a slightly more sophisticated in the sense that we're now beginning to measure biological particles on agar gel. So we get some real development. But whatever else, these methods take a long while. In the Crack Lab, we've been developing over the last few years some new methods for detecting air pollutants and being able to identify and discriminate between them. Now, it's very sophisticated, the instrumentation, but I can show with a very crude um, illustration, an old coin box money sorter, um, the principle. Um, if you think of this as a, as a particulate of one type, I put it in and then I can salt it into one bin. Here's another one that I can put in and it goes into a bin and a third goes into a different bin because it's a different particle. And what we do at the end then is to count the number of particles that there are of a particular type. So here and here, the 50 cents and the 20 cents. And we can then do some chemical analysis on each of them, which is what we do for chemicals with a technique called a Tofmus, And we look at their mass spectra. And for biological particles, if we're discriminating here between pollen and spores, what we do is look at their fluorescence spectra. Now, why do we do this? Well, it's for the public. Um, air pollution kills people. It reduces uh, the life expectancy. And people need to begin, especially if they're at risk population, like the old, the young, and asthmatics, to perhaps change their lifestyle depending on the amount of particulate pollution there is in the air. So our contribution that we hope to be making in the future is not only to make these sorts of real-time measurements that happen in seconds, but be able to pass them on to the public in real time so that you can work out what to do best if you're at risk uh, with your life.